How's it going guys? I'm here with my WWE Money in the Bank 2013 pay-per-view review. Uh, pay got off the air about 15 minutes ago. I got to say overall Money in the Bank this year. Uh, it was a good show. I didn't think it was great. I don't think it was bad by any means whatsoever. I just thought it was a good show. Uh, yeah, I think I actually safe to say that's on the same level as last year's show. Yeah, I think it's uh, safe to say that. But uh, yeah, it's still a good show, but uh, I don't think it lived up to the hype that everyone thought it was going to be. But thumbs up, still a good show regardless. Of course, before the pay-per-view started, you had the 30-minute kickoff, which uh, they had the panel, of course, which consisted of Josh Matthews, The Big Show, Kobe Kingston, Vicky Guerrero. Is it me, or do these panels keep getting worse? Like, honestly, they're putting people on there that I could really not care at all about. Hell, they're putting people on there that I wouldn't even care if they're employed still or not. Like, honestly, the, the panels are... I have no interest in the panels at all. They're just putting people on there that I don't even care about. But yeah, that's the panel there. And of course, you had the kickoff match on there, which was the WWE Tag Team Championship match. Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns versus uh, the Usos. I almost forgot there for a minute who they faced. Uh, I thought it was a good match. I know a lot of people in my Twitter feed were actually really loving this match. I was seeing people saying it was match of the night, which I'm like, okay, it was a good match, but it wasn't that good by any means, I thought. For me personally, I thought majority of the match was pretty boring. Like, it was pretty slow paced. There was a few botches with Reigns and one of the Usos. I just, I really wasn't into the match that much, but the last five minutes was just awesome. I'll admit, the last five minutes of this match, I think that's why everyone loves this match so much, because the last five minutes was just off the chain, just move after move, just all out, going out. It was just a great last five minutes. Hell, this match even had two commercial breaks for whatever reason. But the ending came with the... Uh, Seth Rollins giving a buckle bomb to one of the Usos, and Roman Reigns had a huge spear out of nowhere. One, two, three, retain the tag team titles, and uh, just a good kickoff match. Uh, just, I personally didn't think it was as great as everyone's saying it was, but definitely was good stuff there. Of course, going to the main show, you kicked off the show with the World Heavyweight Championship contract Money in the Bank ladder match. Wade Barrett versus Cody Rhodes versus Damian Sandow versus Dean Ambrose versus Fondango versus Jack Swagger versus Antonio Cesaro. I'm pretty sure I got everyone there. I feel like I'm missing someone. I'm pretty sure I got all of them. Uh, Fondango and Ambrose actually got jobber entrances because they had their entrances during the pre-show or kickoff. So they're already in the ring when the pay-per-view started. So it's like, well, they didn't get entrances. So, you know, they're not going to win. But this is definitely a, a great Money in the Bank ladder match, I thought. Um, just so many spots. Kyle was marking out crazy for this whole match. Uh, you had a spot where Cody Rhodes gave Cesaro a buckle bomb, not a buckle bomb, a muscle buster onto the ladder. Uh, Swagger threw someone on the ladder and Cesaro uppercutted them. There were so many insane spots. I can't even keep up with them. That's how many insane spots there were. It was just a great match, I thought. Uh, this is probably the match tonight, in my opinion. Just really, really good ladder match. Just Like I said, all the spots were... That's pretty much as the match was, a bunch of spots, to be perfectly honest. So... I'm not going to sit here and try and name every spot that happened because there was a lot of sick spots there. So definitely need to tune into that match to you know, really get what I'm talking about. But the ending came to a lot of surprise. A lot of people, a lot of people, including myself, were surprised. Actually, let's go over a few more spots. Some from starting there, I remember some more spots. Uh, Dean Ambrose you know, took the ladder, airplane around. There was actually a really sick spot where uh, Cesaro and Swagger lifted the ladder up with Ambrose holding it. Ambrose flipped over on the ladder and tried to get the briefcase right there. That was a really cool spot. Uh, another one was when uh, Cesaro was on Swagger's shoulders and Rhodes just kicked, uh, drop kicked Swagger and they both fell. Just a lot of insane spots. Definitely check this match out. Best match, or match tonight, I should say, in my opinion. The ending came to a lot of surprise, a lot of people, I thought. Uh, Cody Rhodes was hitting a, a, Rhodes, a crossroads finisher fest on everyone. Um, uh, Barrett, I'm just going to mention this one spot because I keep thinking of these spots as I'm trying to finish up this uh, portion of the show. Uh, Barrett actually did a sick bull hammer where he ran, uh, ran up the ladder, bull hammer swagger. That was just a sick spot. But let's back. Let's go back to the ending now because I'm I keep going back and forth on spots in the ending. I'm con probably confusing you guys. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, Rhodes was hitting his cross so Rhodes finisher fest. Uh, was climbing the ladder. Ambrose tried stopping him. Uh, you know he pulled him down. Uh, Rhodes started going up. Shield came out. You know started beating down on Rhodes. Usos came out. A big brawl in. Uh, pretty much went out during this ending of the match where everyone's on the outside and uh, pretty much Rhodes is the last guy in the ring. Rhodes just climbed the ladder. Damien St. goes to nowhere, throws Rhodes off the ladder, unhooks the briefcase, and is the World Heavyweight Championship contract money in the bank winner. Uh, really, really surprising about this, or surprised about this, I should say. Uh, I'm pretty sure no one, I don't care who you are, no one's going to convince me otherwise. No one 
thought Sandow was going to win. I don't care who you are. Really, really, that was a really, really shocking thing. I didn't, I didn't even think of Sandow winning this. But uh, good for him. I'm happy to see what they deal with him from now on. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what they deal with him with the briefcase now and everything. But great match. Uh, next, we had a Brad Maddox come out, you know, talking about his new general manager, uh, basically trying to get the crowd to uh, say thank you, Vicky, and then he showed a whole video package of Vicky. It was honestly a very, very unnecessary portion of the show that did not need to happen, but did for whatever reason. Uh, from there on, we go to the Intercontinental Championship match, Curtis Axel versus The Miz. I actually thought this was a good match. A lot better than I thought it was going to be. Um, Axel and Miz, surprisingly, look worked good. I was very, very surprised by that. There's a you know spot in the match where uh, Miz was on the outside. Heyman tried to, you know, where Heyman just walked up to him. Miz was like, hey, what do you want? And Heyman's like, oh, I want to do with you. Uh, Miz does, you know, a little Eddie Guerrero tribute. Goes like that to himself. Lands on the floor. Ref turns around. Looks like Heyman slapped him. So Heyman is now ejected. So it's now Miz and Axel one-on-one. -on -one. And they went at it for like another five minutes after that. It was a pretty good match, like I said. Uh, Axel actually won Cleanly, he didn't get a vintage axle win. He actually won cleanly with a new finisher. I don't even know what the hell it was. It was some kind of like neck breaker. But uh, Axel Steer, Intercontinental Champion, still don't care. So, yeah. Uh, next, we go on to the Divas Championship match AJ Lee versus Caitlin. Uh, you know, this match wasn't even close to their uh, payback match, I would say. It wasn't on the same level at all. I didn't enjoy it as much as their payback match or whatever. You know, it's just honestly, it was an alright match. It was honestly nothing special by any means. Uh, I just jumped to the conclusion because there's honestly not, not a lot to talk about this match. Uh, AJ won with the uh, Black Widow, I think it's called. I know in my last video I called it the Widow's Peak, which is Victoria slash Tara's finisher. I'm pretty sure it's Black Widow that it was called. If it isn't, oh well. But AJ retained, still Divas Champion, whatever match. Uh, after that, we go back to the Money Bank panel. They're talking about Curtis Axel and the Miz's match, whatever. Honestly, the panel segments are just nothing. You just... Here and the other superstars suck up to the other superstars. It's honestly nothing special at all. Uh, next, we actually go on to Chris Jericho versus Ryback. Uh, eh, good match. Uh, you know, it wasn't great by any means. It wasn't you know a must see match, but I thought it was a uh, pretty good for those two. Their very first match ever. So it was you know I didn't expect much, but it was uh, I think it served its purpose when it needed to serve. Uh, there was some cool spots where you know Jericho hit a code breaker. And Ryback actually when Ryback was trying to climb the ring, Jericho hit a code breaker. Uh, you know Ryback hit a sick clothesline. Uh, he turned uh, Jericho into shell shock several times, and the Jericho would get out of it. I actually, looked like Jericho got F5 on one of the shell shocks he got out of. It was uh, kind of weird. And uh, you know, Ryback gave him some vicious power bombs. It was just uh, it was a good match. You know, it wasn't great by any means, like I said, but it was just a uh, it was a pretty good match to serve its purpose that it needed. And the purpose was for Ryback to pick up the win, like what he did. Uh, Jericho went for the line salt. Uh, Ryback got out of the way, rolled him up one, two, three, won the match. Uh, Purpose of the match was to give Ryback a pay-per-view win, and it did. Ryback's first pay-per-view win since Money in the Bank last year. So it's been a year since Ryback won a pay-per-view match, so good for him. And, uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, average, average good match. Yeah, thought my neck needed to pop, but it didn't. Uh, next, we had a video package of the WWE Performance Center that was just opened uh, this past week. First of all, I just want to say that the Performance Center looks amazing. Triple H did a phenomenal job on this. And the future is really, really bright for WWE. So I just want to say that right there. Uh, just a great video package. Good stuff there. Next, we move on to the World Heavyweight Championship match. Alberto Del Rio versus Dolph Ziggler. Ziggler was over like no one else. Uh, Del Rio crowd basically didn't care about him. But match, great match. I honestly really like this. Way better than a payback match. I was not a fan of their payback match at all. But this was just a great match. Ziggler, his drop kicks are nothing but beauty. Uh, he hit several of them, by the way, too, so it was that much better. Uh, you know, Dario tried working on the head with the kicks and, you know, tried to hit the a cross arm breaker in. Basically just trying to work up the injury that Ziggler had in the last match. He was trying to recreate that injury, but failed. But uh, it was a great match. I honestly really enjoyed this, and uh, it was good stuff. Uh, it went pretty long, too. It was like 15 minutes, I'd say, around there. Uh, just a great match. I like I said, I really enjoyed it personally. Uh, ending actually came when AJ came out, which, you know, led speculation saying, oh, she's going to cause sick of the match and she's going to line herself with, you know, Del Rio now. Didn't necessarily happen, but it kind of did. Well, her not aligning with uh, Del Rio happened, but she did screw Ziggler out of the match. Uh, Ziggler went for the, uh, not Ziggler, Del Rio went for the super kick. Not super kick, but, you know, the, the kick he does. 
but uh, Ziggler got out of the way, and AJ right in the ring, hit him with the Divas title, Del Rio. So Del Rio won the match via disqualification, uh, so he's still the World of a Champion, but Ziggler, his title chance, or his rematch pretty much got screwed over. Uh, I really do hope this leads to a rematch at SummerSlam with Ziggler and Del Rio, hopefully some kind of stipulation. Uh, hopefully this does not lead to Ziggler and Big E, because first of all, it's Big E, I don't want to see anything involved with him. And secondly, Ziggler deserves being that world title scene. He deserves to be world heavyweight champion. So hopefully we get Ziggler and Del Rio again at SummerSlam, and, uh, which will be the blow-off match, and hopefully Ziggler will gain the title back. Like I said, I was, really, uh, I was a big fan of this match. That was great and uh, good stuff there. Uh, next, we had the WWE Championship match, John Cena versus Mark Henry. Uh, going into this match, I wasn't expecting much, but coming out of it, it was actually a really, really good match. Uh, for Mark Henry wise, I'm not saying this is like a five star classic by any means, but this is a really good match for a Mark Henry match. Uh, just I thought it was great, you know, the crowd was obviously behind Mark Henry, and you know, Cena was kind of like well the underdog, but you know, he was the guy that uh, quote unquote had something to prove. You know, there's actually uh, times in the match where he thought Mark Henry was going to win the title, he didn't. Uh, you know, he thought the world's trying to slam, Cena kicked out, Cena at the AA, Mark Henry kicked out. It was a really good back and forth mat, uh, action for this match. And I think I just surprised a lot of people how good it was. And I was a, I was a fan of this match. I thought it was awesome for what it was. And uh, Cena actually retained the championship. Had Mark Henry in the STF. Uh, Mark went for the ropes. Cena pulled him away. The fight the STF one more time. Mark Henry tapped out. Cena retained the WWE Championship. Uh, just, like I said, a really good match for Mark Henry. I thought it was awesome. And uh, it pretty much served its purpose like the, the Jericho Ryback match. I think the, the purpose of this match was to make Cena look good, even though he doesn't need to, uh, need to look good. I just... It was good stuff. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm going to say about that. Uh, next, go to the Money, Money in the Bank panel again, talking about the title match. Uh, then we have a video package of the White Famous debut because they're recapping, you know, the attack on Kane. That's why he's out of the, uh, the Money in the Bank ladder match. The All-Stars won, which leads into the main event, the WWE Championship contract Money in the Bank ladder match, Money in the Bank All-Stars, whatever you want to call it. Uh, CM Punk versus Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus versus Randy Orton versus Christian versus Rob Van Dam. RVD is the first guy to come out. You know, crowd erupts for RVD. Uh, he's looking great. In this match, uh, you know, I will admit my expectations were probably way, way, way too high. Uh, but it was still a really good match. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it was great, but I'd just say it was really, really good for what it was. Um. RVD, I think everyone was just waiting for RVD to do his moves and see him back in that ring. And that's what he did. He, you know, did his signature moves. Uh, it was pretty funny. At the beginning of the match, RVD tried to do the whole Rob Van Dam thing, but they weren't having it. Everyone else just attacked him, threw him out of the ring, and they attacked Sheamus right after and pretty much uh, ensured into a fatal four way from there on. It was just a uh, pretty, uh, pretty slow paced. Well, not slow paced, but like they took their time with the spots. You really didn't see more than like three guys in the ring at once. I had a lot of times in this match, everyone else just laying on the outside, taking a breather. But uh, yeah, it's still a really good match. RVD, you know, he did a five five star frog splash at the at top of a ladder, which everyone marked out for. He did rolling thunder. He did a monkey flip. He was basically busting out vintage RVD, which I'm, everyone was popping for. That's the main reason I think everyone was looking forward to this match to see RVD uh, in the ring and doing a vintage Rob Van Dam. Uh, Sheamus actually fucked RVD up pretty bad. He, uh, he threw, well, he didn't throw him in the ladder. He kind of like, you know, pushed the ladder into his head. The bro kicked him, and RVD actually got busted open. Which I guess was revenge because there was a spot where Sheamus climbed the ladder. RVD knocked it over, and Sheamus landed pretty bad on his back and ribs. So I guess karma, RVD, karma. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just awesome match. Uh, Punk and Brian, uh, there's a spot where they had like a stare down, but they really didn't go at it. They just, you know, more of a stare down. But uh, just great back and forth action, like I said. There's actually a, a spot where Brian was going to win. Brian was up the ladder by the, by the briefcase. And who comes out? Curtis Axel. More reason for me to hate Curtis Axel for this reason alone right here. That Not that I didn't hate him before, but this gives me even more reason to hate him. Uh, takes Santa Brian down, hits him in the steel chair, basically beating the hell out of him. Uh, Punk comes up, GTS, Curtis Axel. Hammond comes out trying to explain to him, uh, this way to Axel, like, what are you doing? This is Punk's match, this is his moment. Punk's kind of ladder. Heyman takes the ladder, hits Punk down with it, beating the hell out of Punk. Punk gets busted open. Uh, Punk's out of the match. RVD's in the ring, uh, tries to climb the ladder. Freaking, uh, Orton hits a phenomenal RKO. Like, he pushed, like, he grabs RVD's feet, throws it, and catches the RKO in midair at the same time. 
and then Orton climbs the ladder and wins the money in the. What do you want? Go away. I'm making a video. Go away. This is a video, and I'm going to finish it because this is almost done. Go away! What? Does he have to deal with? What do you want? You want ice cream? Go get it then. I ain't getting it for you. Go ask Dad how to go do it. Thank you. There's you guys entertainment in the video if you made it this far. But as I was saying, Randy Orton wins the Money in the Bank ladder match. Um, just a lot of shock. I don't think anyone really expected it. I know there's a few people that said Orton's going to win it, but I didn't think he'd actually win it. Orton wins it. Um, it you know, it, I don't know what to think about this. If Brian, the only reason I can see Orton winning this is uh, to have him cash in on Daniel Bryan sometime down the road when Daniel Bryan is WWE champion. Hopefully he's the next WWE champion, by the way. The only way I see it is Orton cashing in on him. You know, having more revenge. Like, you know, you beat me, now I'm going to beat you for the championship. Orton cashes in, wins, and, you know, reignites their feud. That's the only good I can see coming out of this. But besides that, I don't know what they're going to do with Orton with the briefcase. Uh, same thing with Sand now. I have no clue what they're going to do with both these guys with their briefcases. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. But, uh, yeah, SummerSlam's looking good so far with, you know, Brock and, uh, Brock and Punk are pretty much confirmed. Uh, as for the WWE title match, hopefully we still get Cena and Daniel Bryan because I don't, I don't know who else is challenging Cena. I don't see Orton and Cena at SummerSlam again for the third time. So, uh, yeah, I have no clue what's going to happen. But Money in the Bank, good pay-per-view. Thumbs up for me. I enjoyed it. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed my interruption. Uh, and, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching the video. And uh, next pay-per-view, SummerSlam. So I'll be seeing you guys for another pay-per-view prediction, the pay-per-view review in uh, five weeks' time. Later. Like a Brock and Cena.